What's good, people? Uncle Hotep back at it again. I hope you're having a good Thanksgiving. Um, Baynard Rustin. Bayard Rustin. I said Bayard. Baynard. But Bayard Rustin. You know, actually, I'm, from, I'm actually from Westchester. Well, I'm from Exton, Pennsylvania, but I uh, went to high school nearby in Westchester, Pennsylvania. Um... And they actually opened, you know, Westchester was a bubbling town and the white liberals started moving in and they needed another high school. So they created one, they built one. There were so many people moving in that Westchester was busting at the seams. So they created another high school. And one of Westchester natives decided to name it after him. <laughs> And they named it after one Bayard Rustin. <laughs> now, as you I'm on muckrock.com. They do some research type stuff. Get files from the FBI and all that stuff. All that jazz. Bayard Rustin was being investigated by the FBI while unbeknownst to the Bureau, he was working for the CIA. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Now, I'm reading this, like, because it's relevant in today's time. You know, um, you know, out of D-Ray, Sean King, Netta, um, Jesse, whatever his name is, the actor. Some of them jokers are working for the feds. Let's be perfectly honest. And this is why I try to tell people, man, if you take a look at the 60s, they infiltrated all these groups. Some of these people that you were leaders were working for the feds. So now you fast forward it to the 2010s, 2017, 16, 15, 16, 17. Now all these activists come rising out of, out of the woodworks. The Angela Rise, the Sean Kings, the D-Rays, the Nettas, the Colin Kaepernick's. I'm trying to tell you, say, I would bet after all those names I just said, I bet you at least two or three are working for either the FBI or the CIA. It's simple. It's like, like if they did it in the 60s, don't you think they got better at doing it? At infiltrating groups or creating narratives, they're damn near experts at it. Here's this man, they may have built a school and named it after him. These shots, as a matter of fact, they're making a movie of them. He was working for the, F the CIA. <laughs> Unbelievable. Bayard Rustin was many things. He was a key organizer of the 1963 March on Washington, a.k.a. Malcolm X called it the farce on Washington, an advocate of Soviet Jewry, and a convicted homosexual, according to his FBI investig investigative file. Despite being what many would consider a textbook lefty, Rustin also moonlighted for the Central Intelligence Agency. While that might seem like an irreconcilable contradiction for a man who sat in prison for two years because he refused to serve in World War II, but contradictions aren't there to be reconciled, they're there to confound. But first, a little background by the early late 60s, according to the part of the Church Committee report, the CIA has decided that their pet dictator in the Dominican Republic, President Rafael Trujillo, had officially become more trouble than he was worth. Rafael came to power in the Dominican Republic in 1930. For, the most, for most of his tenure, the United States government supported him, and he was guarded throughout much of the Caribbean and Latin America as a protege of the United States. Rafael's rule, also harsh and dictatorial, dictatorial 
became more arbitrary during the 1950s. As a result, the United States' image was increasingly tarnished in the eyes of many Latin Americans. Increasing American awareness of Trujillo's brutality and fear that it would lead to a Castro-type revolution caused the United States officials to consider various plans to hasten his, his, his abdiction or downfall. You know, CIA is, is good at you know, uh, you already told you that. You already told you the CIA would go go everywhere they go and just take down and install new governments. Trujillo was notoriously violent, particularly toward the political rivals and Haitian residents of the DR. Man, the DR been beating Haitians in the head since the 30s, man. Oh, my goodness gracious. And so fearing unwanted attention for their role in propping him up, in 1961, an agency assisted in Trujillo's Assassination. <clears throat> Following Trujillo's assassination, John Juan Bosch was elected, only to be subsequently overthrown in a 1963 coup that was supported by a surprise the CIA, who feared his government would turn could turn communist. President Bosch understands that the security of his regime depends ultimately upon U.S. support, particularly as a restraint upon the Dominican military, and that his tolerance of communist activity is a sensitive issue. At the same time, he is a nationalist, egotistic, and astutely aware of the political in inexpediency of appearing to be a U.S. puppet. Consequently, he is not readily amen amenable to U.S. advice regarding his policy with respect to communist activities. Although he may accommodate to, to U.S. demands in incidental matters, he is not likely to prescribe all communist activity unless until convinced that they are a direct immediate threat to his regime. President Lyndon, Lyndon Johnson, my man, <laughs> the man who had the, the blacks voting for 200 years for him, it was be quickly becoming something of his signature move, then got on TV and lied about the American embassy being under siege. With this non-existent threat to American lives, having established a false pretext for invasion, LB, <laughs> where we heard this before. LBG, LBJ sent Marines into the DR on April 28, 1965, where they eventually stayed through the do-over election on June 1st, 1966. They were like, oh, ho, ho, we got do-over. What is a do-over election, man? Oh, my gosh. Yo, the 60s must have been something else, man. My goodness, the 60s were something else. According to the files, Rustin traveled to the DR on behalf of the agency in, in April 1966 to help determine whether an election would be possible, i.e. favorable to U.S. interests. The following references in the file caption Dom sit sent out information pertaining to members including Bayard Rustin of the so-called Thomas Mission. He went to Santo Domingo on 4 for a five-day visit. The purpose of the mission was to determine whether it was possible to hold free elections and to schedule elections for 6 in the Dominican Republic. Arrangements for the tour had been made at the Dominican Consulate in New York by Representative Norman Thomas, a perennial Socialist Party candidate for the United President of the United States, while in the Dominican Republic, Rustin toured the countryside and was in contact with various officials of that government. Rustin returned to the U.S. in later part of April 1966. Rustin returned to Santa Domingo in late May 1966 to observe the election. He was their eyes and ears on the ground. Bayard Rustin, the man they built a, a school for. He was working for the feds. Same government he said was no good. Sounds like Sean King. Sounds, sounds like D-Ray. Sounds like Angela Rye. Sounds like Tariq Nasheed. These people got you fooled, man. This is why I'm telling y'all, don't even listen to these jokers. You don't know if they're feds or not. Despite Rustin being in the DR to work for the agency, the FBI surveillance of him seems to indicate they weren't privy to this, his role in the election. Prior to Rustin's departure, the borough was led to believe by a source that leaked passport reservation information to them that Rustin was heading to Israel. <laughs> they, they, they jobbed them jokers, man. See, the, the CIA was covering their tracks. 
they didn't want him to know the FBI to know that they they were sending him down to Dominican Republic to do to do their work to just start snitching. On April 21st, 1966, records of the Passport Office of the United States State Department, Washington, D.C., disclosed that on April 7th, 1966, Bayonard Rustin of 340 West 28th Street, New York, New York, was issued a passport number G whatever through the New York Passport Office. In completing his application, Russian first furnished the following. That he was born on March 17th, 1912, Pennsylvania. Then he plans to depart New York City via air on June 1st for a six, four to six weeks business trip to Israel. This is what Bayard said to put on Bayard. This is what he said he put on, on the application. He's providing his cover. And the feds covered for him. He was. It was learned from redacted at El <laughs> Al Israel Airlines that Russell Rustin does not have a reservation for any period during June 1966. Then they got people inside the airlines. Like, why would they redact that? That's that's he's an agent of some kind. Person that person was an agent of some guy. He explained, however, that he could be he could be part of a tour which would prevent his name from appearing on a specific flight. This was found out. Uh, to be the case with TWA as well. While Russia's decision to work on behalf of the government, he had long protested that such a brutal ongoing enterprise was shocking to those who knew him. It became somewhat less shocking when his position on Vietnam War became known among his patri compatriots. Redacted, <laughs> advised that on 10 Henry Winston contacted Redacted <clears throat> not further described, at his home in New York City. They discussed the statement by Bayard Rustin and others on civil rights. Redacted commented that the statement did not reflect the true feeling of the Negro people concerning Vietnam. Redacted stated he could not understand how big, big super pacifists like Rustin could sign his name to a statement that upheld Negroes participating in the war because he was a CIA flunky. He might have been working, just working with the CIA, period. You know what I mean? Maybe they hire him outright. But he was getting some checks. Because that would be a CIA position. You know what I mean? That, uh, Vietnam. That's a CIA thing. You see what I'm saying? Unbelievable. Despite Rustin's support for issues that seemed completely out of tune with his political stance he took as a younger man, he remained an advisor to Martin Luther King until his assassination in 1968 and continued working for the cause of civil rights afterwards. Rustin was smart as they come and a master strategist, and it is entirely possible that his pacifism and his tolerance of warmongering were ultimately one and the same, and that each was a tool used to further his strategy for power to bring about change. I don't believe that. I just think he was he's he was an agent. And he did what they was told him to do. You know what I mean? He it was in on it because he lied on his thing saying he was going to Israel when he wasn't. So he knew it with the scheming. He knew how to scheme. You see what I'm saying? They provided a cover for him. He went right along with it. What changed? Of course, you know what I mean? Yes, maybe he was trying to com com uh, enact some change. But what change was he trying to enact? He Was he trying to enact the change that the feds gave him? Wanted to, wanted to change? See, the feds will have these jokers out here wanting for a change that they want themselves. But they can't do it themselves. You have to have the people to do it. So they get you all to do it. And they, and they get these activists to do it. And they'll rant and rave, march and protest and do this, that, and the third. And then they'll try to get the, the laws changed on the books. The feds wanted those laws changed anyway. It's like I said, it's chess, not checkers. Unbelievable. This guy was working for the CIA, man. 
Look at him. He looks suspect. <laughs> I'm telling you what, man. <sighs> Sorry. 30, 40, 50 years from now, man, they're going to be like, they're going to have released these documents on T-Ray. And y'all going to be so surprised. <laughs> Our Uncle Hotep won't be. Nobody from Hotep Nation will be. Anybody that's Hotep won't be surprised. But y'all is going to be surprised about this. Anyway, this is Uncle Hotep. Peace. <laughs>